Welcome to the Israel United in Christ podcast with the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, where you get the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth from the words of the Most High straight from the Bible. Join us each week as the prophets break down the deep basics, unlock Bible mysteries, expose dangerous deceptions, and show you how to come back to your true heritage and inherit the kingdom of heaven. These are revelations and insights you won't get anywhere else. So he that has an ear, let him hear, because the prophets are about to speak. Shalom, 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 Israel. All praise to Mosai in Christ. I am Deacon Malachi. I am Officer Amaziah. I'm, I'm Officer Shemaya. All praise. Today, we have a special guest. It's always a pleasure to be in the same room with this, with this brother. We got Bishop Netanyahu in the house, of ways. We also got Deacon Labaka with. <laughs> now I'm gonna just pass, I'm just gonna pass it to them because uh, I know I know Bishop Netanyahu got. The, I know he's bringing the fire, so. Be prepared, be ready. Here comes the fire. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High and His Son, Jesus the Christ. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things today. A couple of things. We're going to talk about your friendly neighborhood white man who is in charge of the media. We had a couple of acronyms. I'm just going to read them out to you, okay, just in case. You have the so called Jewish run media, okay? ABC, ABC News, which stands by, which means anything by Caucasians. Remember that one. They also in charge of NBC, standing for nothing but Caucasians. Okay, you have CBS News, Caucasians Broadcasting System, mm. CNN, Caucasian News Network, MSNBC, more stupid news by Caucasians. <laughs> and you have Fox News, full of excrement news. Mm. The news media, they, we were talking about us there on the way into the studio, how, uh, if you notice, blacks have been forgiving, uh, what's that Edomite boy's name? Dylan Roo, Dylan Roo, for murdering nine blacks. But there was a, a Arab dude that just re shot up in Tennessee, Chattanooga, right. shot up the Marines recruiting center, and everybody wants vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. I, I want y'all to see the difference between so-called black folks and white folks. White folks are not as forgiving as they want you to believe. They didn't forgive during 9-11, not at all. Understand that. They don't forgive. Black folks are the only, oh, I just forgive. I got the love of Jesus. No, you got the love of stupidity on you. That's right. I'm telling you straight. <laughs> President Obama, from what I heard, he wants to lift the embargo on Iran. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, did he already do it? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Now Congress said that they were planning to uh, stop him yeah, from doing that. He's gonna. Uh, how do you say when you say he's, he's gonna, gonna veto? He's gonna veto it. Yes. Right. He's gonna veto it. Israel Netanyahu of Israel is pissed off. He says if you lift the embargo on Iran, he says you don't realize the repercussions behind it. And I know most 99.9% .9 of you black people listening right now, who are not in the military, I'll say it like that. You religious ones, you so-called political ones, if you've never been in the military, I know you're confused. And you're like, what's wrong with him lifting the, the embargo? It's a good thing, don't you think? Y'all are simple as hell. But you know what? As the, we're the Israelites, so we want them to lift this embargo. We I'm want sorry. it. I'm sorry. Because we know the repercussions behind it is going to be war. Yes. And you are not to cry and picket and march against war. Thus, this is what Christ said, the real Christ, the black Messiah. You're supposed to want, well, why? Because it means we are about to be delivered. That's we are about to right. go home. So, the and, uh, do you know what an embargo act is? Anyone? You know what an embargo act is? Yes, Can you explain that embargo act to us? An embargo is when a company, uh, excuse me, a company, a nation, particularly Babylon the Great, they this allow you to trade and make money with the other nations, such as the United Nations. They do not allow you to 
buy or sell or in other words trade with other nations for goods and products yeah so you are basically blacklisted mm. yeah they also another thing they also do which is big it's they're forbidden out of bank to borrow from other bank mm. in other words you bank in your country they cannot borrow money or they cannot lend lend money to other countries that's what what they're hoping to do by doing that is cripple your economy and the thing that it really does is it never hurts the, 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 the hierarchy of that country. It always hurts the the people. Yeah, the people. The the, the, the working class. It yeah, the, hurts go, them. the government don't care. The government don't care. Uh -huh. They get they 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 gonna be rich nah, regardless. The government of Iron Iron don't care. They got billion already. Remember when they when they got they got Saddam out of Iraq, he had he had palaces. Yeah. He had gold on him. They they robbed his, his own his his temples and stuff. Yeah. So he was rich. But it was the people that was poor. Exactly. Exactly. So watch this. I'm a, I looked it up. Bishop, by the way, yeah. and by the way, the reason they do it is not to, in, in other words, quote, quote unquote, to actually cripple the government. They do it so they can cripple the people. Right. So they're hoping the people can turn against the government. Exactly. That's why they do it. Oh, civil unrest. That's yes. Right. And embargo act, everything y'all said was correct. I had to look it up. I said, let me sit down and look this thing up. The Embargo Act enacted by Congress in 1807 at the request of President Thomas Jefferson, that's another friendly neighborhood white man, uh, that he banned trade, they banned trade between the US, US parts and foreign nations. Embargoes are the complete ban or prohibition of trade by one country with another. Now, embargoes and sanctions just have small differences. Sanctions are trade uh, prohibition on certain types of items. Like you could put a sanction on this microphone from being sold to anybody. That's sanctions are, are partial embargoes or smaller embargoes. But pretty much the same thing. Okay, now I want to go to the scriptures. I want to go to the scriptures because you got some people running around talking about uh, a microchip, a damn microchip being put in your, what did it put in your butt? <laughs> where did it put the microchip? In your earlobe? Someplace. Give me that Revelation 13 real quick. All I want, all I want is verse 17. Yes, sir. Now, remember, we just explained what an embargo is. Yes, sir. No trade between U.S. or any country or, or any other country. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. Come on, read that. All I want is verse 17. Yes, sir. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. This one? I can't hear you. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. I don't think you're the only we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So what you want to look at in that verse is buy or sell. Buy or sell. You cannot buy or sell. You have Negroes running behind Alex Jones. Uh, run, not even just Alex Jones, because he just came out. When did Alex Jones come out? Like in the 90s, some, some place like that. But prior to him, you had Jack Van Empey, Billy Graham. Maybe Jack Van Empey. He's the Edomite that used to run around, see, talk about the microchip, the microchip. Lord God, the microchip. Putting your arm. But Revelation 13 about buying and selling is talking about an embargo. Buying and selling is talking about sanctions. Buying and selling, to make it simple, one word, is talking about trade. And that no man might trade. Can we read it like that? Yes, sir. And that no man might trade, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, let's go, let's jump over, jump over. I want to go to Revelation chapter 18. I want to go to, I want all y'all to pay attention. Because what you're doing, what we're doing, we're showing you Bible prophecy revealed before your eyes. So if you're listening, open up your Bibles, take out your notebooks and pens and paper. Listen good. I want Revelation 18. Just, just read me verse 11. Because okay. Babylon, this great country, Babylon the Great, Revelation 13 said that no man might buy or sell. That's what, that, is that what we just read? Yes, sir. Okay. Revelation 18. Just, just read me verse 11. Let me hear verse 11. Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. And the merchants of the earth. Notice it says, and the merchants. The merchants. Merchants are those people 
who buy and sell. Merchants are those people who trade. Read it again. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. See, the merchants want people to buy their merchandise. N hey, let me tell the Negro on the corner. You are not a merchant, all right? You Negroes running behind Jack Van Empey and uh, Rex Hamball, Alex Jones, thank you, talking about a microchip is coming where you can't buy yourself. Brother, listen good, black man. This truth is for you. Wake up, please. It says, read it again, verse 11. All I want is verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. So when Babylon the Great is destroyed, which is the United States of America, the merchants shall weep and cry, because no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Jump down in that same chapter, verse 15 to 17. Watch this. Verse 15. Now, we're reading this in conjunction with Revelation 13, where it said, uh, what did it say again? No man might buy or sell. Right, exactly. Except he that had the mark or the name or the number of his name, whatever, whatever. You know, y'all with me? Come on. Verse 15. The merchants of these things, watch this, which were made rich by her, which were made rich by America, Babylon the Great, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Because America is on the brink of war. America is on the brink of natural, not even natural, <laughs> a cosmic disaster. I'll say it like that. Go ahead. And saying, alas, alas, that great city. That great city is the United States of America. That was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. In one hour. Is all the riches here come to nothing. Come on. And every shipmaster. Watch this. Now it's going to name the merchants. And every shipmaster. And all the company and ships. And all the companies and ships. And sailors. And sailors. And as many as trade by sea stood afar off. So what's the operative word we want out of that? What's the word we want? Trade. 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 You Negroes got, you listen to Alex Jones talking about we can't buy sneakers if we ain't got a microchip. Brother, this ain't talking about buying you buying a pair of sneakers. This is talking about big business. This is talking about Nash. This is talking about countries doing trade with this country and other countries. And America is at the heart, the center of it all. Now, the mark, back in Revelation 13, one more again, that verse, that verse. Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Pause. The word mark. A lot of people get on. What, what, what is the mark then? What is the mark? Because sometimes, we, you've all often heard me, I may sometimes I may say, it's Christianity or uh, democracy. But I'm going to give you an easy word because guess what? Some countries do trade with America. They're not Christian. Some countries do trade with America, like China, for example. Yeah. They're not democratic. But America still does business with them. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a word, a biblical word, that we can use. Give me Daniel 8. And I'm going to show you the operative word in that verse for trade. Because the Greeks put forth all kinds of stuff when they was coming against the Israelites. Watch this. Watch this. And now, let me sum up the verse for you, because somebody gets simple out there. This verse is Daniel prophesying about what Antiochus Epiphanes would do. Watch what it says. Go ahead. Verse 1. Verse 25, I'm sorry. Daniel 8, verse 25. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Right, because the Lord killed him. Now, out of that verse, what is the word, the operative word we want to pull out of that verse to tie in with Mark? Anybody see it? Policy. Policy. America deals with her policies. And it's, she has a whole lot of policies, a whole lot of orders that countries abide under. Y'all yep. understand that? Yes, 
Yeah. I want y'all to I, I want y'all to flow with me now. Watch this. Ezekiel 28. I'm gonna show you the same thing in Ezekiel. The prophet Ezekiel prophesied about your friendly neighborhood white man, who we call Americans today, doing the same thing that John spoke of. Ezekiel 28. Let's start from, we're going to read 1 through 5. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Somebody right now going, wait a minute, it says the prince of Tyrus. Tyrus is Tyre. Isn't that to Africans, my brother? This is hip talk. Ezekiel is prophesying, prophesying <laughs> about America in the last days. The white man, your friendly neighborhood white man. Watch as we read down. It's going to be a little clearer. Verse 2, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seat. Now, is the Africans running around saying he's God? Is the Africans got uh, military bases in everybody's land? That's what it means when it says, I sit in the seat of God, I sit uh, the part above. Uh, what does it say? Because mm, lifted up, thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. When it says the midst of the seas, it means they're in everybody's land. Africa ain't doing that. This is your friendly neighborhood white man doing this. It is the white man saying, I am God. You don't believe what we're saying? Go to your church and look for a picture of God. Hey, go to the White House and look for a picture of God. That's right. You will see who they got posted. They had that picture in Charleston, in that church in Charleston, right before oh, Dylan Roof yeah. went on a murder spree. Yeah. Mm, they Checked had the, the big white Jesus on the wall. Two, two of them. That's right. That's why when he walked in, they said, look, yeah. Jesus in the room. Yeah. Have a seat, Jesus. <laughs> now, what verse you at? Read verse 2, sir. Come on. Son of man. You read that already. Verse 3. Behold. No, read 2 again. I'm sorry. Verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the sea. Here it comes. Yet thou art a man. Yet thou art a man. What type of man? Your friendly neighborhood white man. That's what it's talking about. Read. And not God. You are not God, Mr. White Man. Go ahead. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Go ahead. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Meaning what? This man has such uh, technology. They hear everything. They see everything. That's why a lot of you niggas get caught up in the drug gang. They hear the white man see. Even if you he, if you get away with it, he let you get away with it. Yeah. He sees everything. This technology of his got a rap on everything. Yep. Watch this. Read on. Verse 4. Watch this. This is the point. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding... Thou has gotten the riches. Riches. Didn't we just read about Babylon being a rich nation? Yep. Yep. Watch this. Read. And has gotten gold and silver into thy treasure. Now here comes, we're going to, this next verse is going to hit you with the word we want. Go ahead. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. Give me another word for traffic. Trade. 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 Get, break it down. Simple. Give me a simpler term now that you, Revelation used. Buying and selling. Buying and selling. By thy great wisdom and by buying and selling, go ahead. As thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Now that might scare some of y'all, because you are living in the greatest time on earth. The United States of America is Babylon the Great. Understand, now listen good to what I'm about to say. But what about the microchip? Yes, their science is trying to make these, dil these dumb microchips, but that is not what the Bible is talking about when it says the mark. It's talking about America's policies of trade, America's policies of buying and selling. You don't abide under America's policies, they put an embargo on you. They put sanctions on you. And sure. guess what? Now Obama says, let's lift the embargo uh, on Iran. Oh, they said, and, and he said, what about nuclear weapons? He said, don't worry. You know, Obama can talk very well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a smooth black <laughs> man. Right, yeah, right, right, he right. talks so good, There'll be a missile coming at you. He'll tell you that's not a missile. <laughs> he said, don't worry. He says, with the uranium that they have, Iran I'm talking about, they are not able to, give me the words, um, construct, create, a, co create a nuclear weapon, create a nuclear weapon. Uh, until it'll when? Take 10 years. It'll take 10 years, he said. 
But guess what? The Negroes are going, oh, see, we see he had a solution. No dumb Negro who doesn't understand politics or anything. When they lift the embargo, that includes the the weapons embargo is lifted also when you read the paperwork. Yes. It's that's lifted. Why, that's why the Russian government was quick to sign any. Right. Because remember, the deal was when they sit at the table making the deal, Russia, the Russian government was there, right. the Chinese government was there, mm -hmm. the American government was there, all of them got a representative in that talk, right. that peace talk. Exactly. That's why they're quick to sign it. The Russians say, wait a minute, I got a bunch of weapons in my warehouse, I want to get rid of. Right. Let's sign this thing and get rid of these weapons. Hey, I want to buy and sell and exactly. trade with Iran. Exactly. <laughs> remember, Russia is the one that's really happy about this deal because remember, America put suction on Russia. That's right, no But in Russia. Russia. So Russia said, they said, we, want, we, need, we need that money. Let's sign this deal and send them, send them some, uh, sell them some weapons. And yeah. guess what? Some of the weapons are going to sell them too. I mean, some of these weapons are going to sell. Give me cool weapons. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Dirty bombs. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, man, but you notice that there was a treaty that passed between China, Russia, Iran, and uh, Syria. If you take away uh, Rush, uh, Iran guns, but they already signed treaty with that brother who already have the nuke. So he don't mind don't have it because his partner will fight for him. That's, that's, right. what, that's what the treaty was for, to, uh, to, uh, to be against the North, the West, because the West is, is, power, uh, is powerless, these other nations here. So they say, let's pass the treaty between China, Russia, so if the West attack. I win where we can fight against the rest. Your dummies. Y'all have to understand that what this Bible is talking about. It's time to pull your head out of the behind hold of white America. And when I say that, I'm talking about Christianity because that is a lying, demonic religion. I'm going to say it again. Christianity is an oppressive, demonic religion. It has done more murder and bloodshed on you black men and black women than any religion. That's right. That's right. You cr you crying about Islam. Islam, hey, is that's way past time. You under America now. America has destroyed our families under with Christianity. I'm talking about guess what? The Ku Klux Klan is a Christian foundation. That's right. That's right. You black dummies. Yep. What is wrong with our people? Do you realize it was Christians that got Seven hundred thousand dollars behind Dylan Roof for his uh right. for murdering nine black people. When he for when his court court uh, hearings come about, yeah. seven hundred thousand dollars in a day. So guess what? There was probably seven hundred thousand white folks behind that. Yeah. You should not talk about seven hundred thousand. Don't even mention seven hundred thousand dollars no more. That thing right. reached about what? Four million now? You're right. Oh, You're absolutely right. I forgot about it. That thing reached four million. You kill nine. I, I kill nine people. I'm gonna. I'm getting four million dollars. Exactly. I go. I go kill nine more. But 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 you know. Listen to this though. But did we collect four million for the nine blacks? No. No. You see, you see the difference. No. That means that why the enemy collect money for their own people, but uh -huh. our people cry and said. But we don't collect nothing. That's showing you how simple we are as a people. Because we're too busy forgiving them. Right. Remember too, this is not the first time that happened. Zimmerman collected money. Yeah. Right. So did uh, Darren Wilson for killing Mike Brown. They give him a million dollars. They give him a million dollars for the interview. He's not a police officer anymore. He quit. They give him a million dollars for the interview. He's, 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 he's on a beach somewhere in the Bahamas with more Jake worshiping him. Right. Yeah. And what did those dusty sandbox Negroes say in Charleston? They said, well, what we really want to do, because uh, we know which way right. <laughs> we want y'all to take down the Confederate flag. So the white man said, you some dumb niggas. Take that flag down. Get ready to take that flag down. And they said, oh, yeah, pray Jesus. Hey, the flag is down. What about the flag in their hearts? Right. What about right. the flag on their bumper, stick, their bumper stickers? Bring it on. Guess what? There was more murders done under the current United States of America flag yes, than right. the Confederate flag. That's yes, right. right. You yeah. Negroes is a dumb, we's, I'll say we's a dumb group, bunch of people. So, Netanyahu, another friendly neighbor of the white man, is furious. He said he wants to bomb Iran. He said he can't take it no more. Can y'all get me uh, Zechariah 12, please? Let me tell you something. The current state of what is known as Israel today was established. What year was it established? 1948. 1948. 
by the league by the League of Nations, right? By the League of Nations, correct? By the League of Nations, it was actually mandated in 1922. When you you could go go to uh, you can go to uh, Wikipedia and talk, look up the League of Nations and Israel. The, the the agreement that Israel would be a state was mandated April 1922. But it didn't become it didn't come into fruition until 1948. You see that the white man said the, the plan was already to establish the white man in Israel from 1922. Right. But they needed a world war That's to right. get that thing That's right. in order because you had the Arabs over there. Remember the Arabs was running all over there. They right. said we need to get them to the side yeah. and we need to get in there. Yeah. That's some prying God like real estate there. Why? Because they wanted to really establish themselves as God's people. Establish themselves as the Jews. Give me Zechariah 12 and 3, please. Read the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 3. And understand, so this is not a racial, a racially motivated hate campaign. This is strictly biblical truth. We're going to give you the true news according to God, right. not according to our emotional feelings. Come on. Verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Everybody that burdens themselves with Jerusalem, God says they shall be cut in pieces. Now, I'm going to tell you the meaning behind that. Because Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Yes, right. So America has burdened themselves with having keeping us hostage here, because that's where we are. They're going to be cut in pieces. They took our land, the, our land of Jerusalem. The Bible says you burden yourself with that, you shall be cut in pieces. Read it one more time. Behold. In that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Y'all see that? So everybody, you got John Hagee running around talking, we got to be a friend to Israel. We got to be a friend to the Jews. You overgrown windbag. That ain't the real Israel. That ain't, they're not the real Jews. We are! That's right. That's right. But you burden yourself holding that lie, that uplifting that lie that the white man, who's really Esau, the nation of Edom, is the Jew, you're going to be cut in pieces. Understand that. Watch this. Daniel 11, verse 14, please. Daniel 11, verse 14. They went to great painstakings to establish themselves as the Jews from the time of Christ, from the time of Rome. When you read about King Herod in Luke, it tells you he was king of Judea. How was king, when you look up King Herod, it said he was an Edomite. And Edomite is the Caucasians. Yeah. How was he set up as king of the Jews? Rome set that up. Right. Then through Herod's line, you had King Agrippa, you had Berenice, and that entire family, like you read in Acts, they were all converts, converts. These are the people you see, Netanyahu, convert. The word Jewish. That it's, I'm going to tell you what it means. They are converted to Judaism. They are converts because of the suffix I-S-H means somewhat like, not the original, but something like. Like if I say, hey, brother, meet me around five-ish. Right. That means somewhere around five I want you to meet me. It could be a little before five, a little after five, but not necessarily five. Yeah. So they say, oh, we are Jewish. And when they talk, they say the Jewish people, and you Negroes don't pick it up what they're saying. They're telling you that they're con. Hey, nigga, we're converts. We're telling you we are converted to you being you. That's what Jewish means. Read that for me. And chapter eleven, verse fourteen. And in those days, excuse me, in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. The king of the south at that time was the Ptolemy Empire. Right? Also, the robbers of thy people. Also, the robbers of thy people. Meaning those that robbed your land your country, your nationality, your race, shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. Establish the vision that they are the people of God. Establish the vision that they are the Jews. But what? But they shall fall. They shall fall. That is Bible prophecy. So we're not stressed and worried about the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew or Jewish. The prophecy says he shall what? But they shall fall. They shall fall. Now, from there, give me Ezekiel 36 and 5. We'll learn at Sunday school. It would behoove every black man, black woman, Latin man and Latin woman to come out of these false churches. Because right. you're not learning nothing. 
All I want is verse 5. It's Ezekiel 36, verse 5. So, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is a Greek and Roman name for Edom. Edom means red. The red people are all your friendly neighborhood Caucasians. They're Edom. Now, why is God going to be angry with Edom, Idumia? Come on. Which have appointed my land into their possession. Which have appointed my land into their possession. God in the Bible is telling you and every one of us that Idumia, Edom, has appointed the land of Israel into their possession. Was that it? No, sir. Okay. With the joy of all their hearts. With the joy of all their hearts. Oh, I'm ye Yehudi. I'm ye Yehudi. I am a Jew. I am a Jew. Go ahead. With despiteful minds. With despiteful minds. Because they hate us, the real way. They hate the Israelites. Go ahead. To cast it out for a prey. They cast the land out for a prey. Meaning what? Come to Israel. Come with friends. Come Ethiopians. You can get a little portion of this land. Come Arabs. We will allow you some little, little part here. Right. Come. That's what they do. Now, watch this. Give me Revelation 2, 9. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy work and tribulation. This is Christ speaking to the true Jews, the true Israelites. And poverty. Because we are spiritually poor people. Go ahead. But thou art rich. The Bible says we're rich. Why? Because all the promises in the Bible is for our people. Come on. And I know the blasphemy. Uh oh, read this part slow. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. But wait a minute. ABC News teaches us that they're the Jews. Anything by Caucasians, people believe. That's ABC News. NBC says the white man in Israel, Netanyahu, and them, those are the Jews. Nothing but Caucasians. CNN, Caucasian News Network, said those are the Jews. Read that again. And I know the blasphemy. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. MSNBC more stupid news by Caucasians, says they are the Jews over there. Fox News, full of excrement, says that they are the Jews over there. The Bible says they are not, but are who? But are the synagogue of Satan. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus Christ said. This ain't my words. Understand that. That's the love of Jesus. That's the right love there. of Jesus. Because you know what the people do? They are now looking at us saying, you guys are full of hate. No, we're not. Guess what? If, if the Bible, let's say that if the Bible was not in the picture, most of us would be in love. Just so in love with the so-called white man. Maybe not an Alakai, but maybe, you know, we just be in, because he feeds us, he clothes, he does everything for us. But there comes a time when we have to stand upon truth. And what does God say? Can you read the verse in its entirety? I won't even interrupt you. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's what the Bible teaches. You know what that say also? They are the devil. <laughs> That's right. That's what he's saying. That's right. They are the devil. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. Yeah, if you got a problem, you got to take that up with God. Exactly. We didn't say that's what the Bible said. Exactly. Hey, guess what? Because if the Bible said that those that say are the Jews and are not, we're supposed to hug them and kiss them. Guess what we would be doing? You'd be hugging and kissing. Hugging and kissing them. But it doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. Christ said they are the synagogue of Satan. And like you right. said, they are the devil. That's what the Bible says. But let's back up a little bit. Let's back up. Watch this. Get Matthew 24. I just want to back up a little bit during the time of Christ. And I want verse, all I want is verse 1 and 2. Watch this. We're in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for, for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now the temple. I want y'all, I just want to understand this about the temple. You know the temple was thrown down, right, brothers? The temple was yes, thrown sir. down. What is left standing? Nothing. So what's over there? 
What is that wall, the Wailing Wall? Oh, that's Her that's uh, Herod's. That's Herod's uh, built. Herod built that. Right, exactly. Now watch this. Many of you, because of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, NBC, believe that the Wailing Wall is the last wall of the temple. But Christ said, what did Christ say again? And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So Christ said there should be nothing left standing, right? Nothing should be left standing, but you have the wailing wall. And guess what? I want to see if y'all thinking. What does every president generally have to do when they become president? Anybody know? They got to go to that. No, they got to go to that wall, put the little yarmulke on, and do the little friend, do the, do the, exactly. you know, the bow down exactly. thing. They got to daven at the wall. That is a political rite of passage. When you research it, JFK, from what I understand, JFK did not go to the Wailing Wall. He was your first Roman Catholic president. They, he got murdered. You have to go to the Wailing Wall. That is a pact, an agreement with the United States and Israel. That's why over in the Middle East they call it uh, so-called Israel, uh, Little America. They call it the Great Satan. No, they call this place the Great Satan, and Israel, Little Satan. <laughs> there is a union between those two, like you can read about in Ezekiel 35, 36. So now, Christ said there would be nothing left standing, right, brothers? Sorry. That's what Christ said, right? Yep. When you read Josephus in uh, the Book of War, he got the War Book, it said, the historian Josephus said Rome destroyed Jerusalem, including the temple. Nothing was left standing. Nothing. And that's what Christ said in Matthew 24. So this wailing wall, what is it? And like you said, you're absolutely right. When you look up something called Fort Antonia, Fort Antonia, that was one of the last walls that Herod had uh, with Rome. Which what there was a fort that General what's his name General Titus and Vespasian had they had a fort adjacent to the temple that Herod had reinforced that is the only thing left standing and that was the fort Antonia so that is what they call the Wailing Wall there's an article by I read it called by a guy called Jorge Bergoglio it's a blog spot I couldn't believe what I was reading he talks about the Wailing Wall he talks about Fort Antonia. And give me Titus 1.14. Watch this. Anybody know what the word daven means? It's a Yiddish word, daven. Because they say you're davening. You go to the wall and you daven. You daven. That's not an equal word. It's not an equal word. It's a Yiddish <laughs> word. It means, listen good, it means to move. So when I started researching it, many so-called Jews say, oh, it means to move your lips. But So I'm thinking to myself, so why are they always doing this? Yeah. I kept looking, kept looking, Darwin, Darwin, and it said it means to move, but not to move your lips, move your hips. It's a thrusting sexual act. Mm. That's why it looks so damn nasty. <laughs> Look at that. Who prays like, you don't read that anywhere in scripture, right. where they pray, our forefathers held up holy hands. Solomon, all, all went, they went on their knees and, and bowed their face to the earth. Nobody was thrusting their hips at that wall. That's some nasty stuff. It ain't got no rhythm. So you know what's going on. Not at all. <laughs> Give me Titus 1.14. We're in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish faith. See, that's the word Jewish right there. That's one of the only places, if I'm not mistaken, that you'll find the word Jewish in Scripture. A Jewish fable is a lie. It's something concocted. And it says Jewish because that's what Herod in them was. Jewish. Not giving heed. Don't listen to. Don't hearken to what? Jewish fable. Jewish lies. Do it, Jewish fairy tales. Go ahead. Com and commandments of men. Commandments of men. What men primarily? The so-called white man. Why? That turn from the truth. Because these Jewish fables will turn you from the truth. Guess what? Christmas is a Jewish fable. That's right. I'm going to say it again. Christmas is a Jew. Christmas is a Jewish fable. We're going to get it right, brothers. Don't worry. We're going to get it right. Come on. Was that it? That was it, sir. So now, some of you might not believe what I said about Fort Antonia. I'm going to give it a book reference. It's called The Temples at Jerusalem Forgot by Dr. Ernest L. Martin. 
it tells you in there that it was Fort Antonio. That is the Wailing Wall that people cry and moan at today, and Darwin, <laughs> which is a sexual rite of passage. Wow. I'm going to tell you, that is demonic. And every president must go over there and make that union. Israel is sometimes, as I said earlier, sometimes called Little America, and all U.S. presidents must go to the Wailing Wall at Fort Antonio, to Darwin as a political rite of passage. I want to go to Isaiah 34, verse 8. I know right now some of you are upset. You're listening. You can't believe what you're hearing. It's shocking to you. How in the hell could these little black boys know this stuff? There's a spirit that the Lord brings forth upon his chosen. Read that for me. All I want is verse 8. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. The Lord is about to bring vengeance. Understand this, brothers. Understand this, sisters. Go ahead. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. For the what? For the controversy of Zion. Vengeance, judgment is coming because of the controversy of Zion. The controversy is A, who are the real Jews? Who are the 12 tribes of Israel? The controversy is who does the land belong to? Does it belong to the so-called white man that calls himself Jewish, or does it belong to the Palestinian? There's controversy. Read the verse again. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Zion is another name for Israel. Understand that. There's a plot. Listen good to what I'm about to say. There's a plot, a conspiracy to hide the truth that we blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians are the 12 tribes of Israel. That is the controversy. Understand that. The nations fear us waking up. Black man, the nations don't fear you marching. They don't fear you picketing. They don't fear you burning down your own homes. They laugh at you. The fear is you waking up. Can we get that real quick in Revelation 11? Yep. This is the fear. Read the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit wait, of... Wait, read it slow. i got to get up in there. Come on. And after three days and a half... Meaning 350 years. The spirit of life from God entered into them. Meaning the truth that we, the Israelites, started to enter into us. When was that? Around your late 60s. Okay, because we looked at time from 1619 on up, get up about 350 years. That was about the late 60s, somewhere around now. We started to wake up. Wait a minute, I'm not Negro, I'm not African American, I am an Israelite. It's like, oh, what the hell? And listen, brothers, listen, sisters, after you wake up, what we going to do now? That's right. We're going to start to mobilize and organize to get our people together. In the name and spirit of the Most High God in Christ. Read it again. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Standing upon your feet means what? It doesn't mean stand up as a Negro with a picket sign, uh, no hands justice, no feet. peace, or hands up. Don't shoot all that. I can't breathe. I can't ple breathe. Put a plunge in my butt. No! <laughs> it ain't talking about that. It's talking about stand up as Israel. Stand up as the 12 tribes of Israel. Organize. Mobilize. That's what it's saying. Then it said, and what? When we do that, what does it say? And what? And great fear fell upon them which saw them. I want y'all to see the prophecy. That's what you're seeing now. The anger that you're feeling right now, brothers and sisters, is not at me, the messenger. It's the truth of the word of God. What's happening in your mind right now is the, uh, the what's the word? The conflict of Christianity and what we're reading in scripture now. You're like, well, I've never taught that. So you're angry. You're not, you got un, uh, unsettled anger. And you're, right now, it's look, look, pointing at us. And you know what, Bishop? It's anger because Christianity is contrary to what the Bible says. It's, it's, it's contrary in all facets to what God says. You go contrary to the Bible, you go totally opposite, you, you go to Christianity. Totally opposite. Exactly. You know, your uh, uh, 
President Obama, what's his name? President Barack Obama, excuse me, I apologize. He passed, no, not him. The United States Supreme Court made same-sex marriage the law of the land. No. And everybody's hooting and hollering. Let me tell you something. That was, everything in this country is directed towards our people. I, I made the statement that uh, Congress, not Congress, the United States Supreme Court, Supreme Court yes. passed a law that same-sex marriage is the law of the land. Is that right? Is that yeah, right? That's, that's, the highest, that's the highest court. You cannot go higher than that. And we have, there's no appeals. No. Nope. You can't go back on that thing. No. Nope. When, when my firstborn son was born, they used to, when he entered the school system, they used to send us, me and my wife, letters asking, is it okay to teach your son same-sex uh, relations? We said, hell no. But now, no letters are going to be sent. Nope. I want everybody to see how, how deep the rabbit hole goes on this thing. Not only is it a law of the land where they can teach it in schools without repercussions, um, Sesame Street, everybody always talked about Bert and Ernie, those two male puppets living together. Watch them adopt a little black baby. You have a little black baby named Tyrell, something like that. <laughs> You're going to see all the shows that you allow your children to sit down and view from a toddler age is going to corrupt them. I, every, this, this law was passed not for so-called white people or the other nation. This law was passed to destroy the children of Israel. Who y'all? I'm going to prove that. Give me Judith, chapter 5, verse 20, I believe it is. We're in the book of Judith, chapter 5, and verse 20. Now, this is an Ammonite, a Japanese nation, having a discussion with a man, a general called, I believe it was Holofernes. Holofernes, yes, sir. Holofernes asked, who is that people did not come down to meet me, to greet me, to join me? So this Ammonite begins to give him the history of the Israelites. Now there's only one, he gives a long dissertation. I just want this one verse about something he said about the Israelites. Listen good. Judah chapter 5, verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, any sin in this people, and they sin against their God. And if the Israelites are sinning against their God, listen good. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. This shall be their ruin. Go ahead. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. See that? So the nations know, if you can keep the 12 tribes of Israel in sin, that, that is the Israelites' ruin, and the nations can continue to rule. So I made a statement. I said that whole gay homosexual thing, that was a plot to keep us further in sin. Watch this. Give me Habakkuk 3.14. No, before we get there, give me Isaiah 1 and 9, I think it is. Isaiah, if, if it was something about, you know what, okay. We're in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9. Listen good. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. The very small remnant is the elect, which are those men waking up as Israelites teaching his laws. Go ahead. Except the Lord had done that. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. All of us, all of us would be as Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what God, that's what scripture says. So I made the statement. I said that this new law is a plot against the Israelites. That's really, this is why God is waking us up. Give me Habakkuk 3.14 about the second coming of Christ. Watch what it says. Now I always joke conspiracy nuts. And the reason I joke them is because you know all these conspiracies, but you have no plan of action. You have no recourse. <laughs> Watch this. We're in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 14. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. That's Christ returning, destroying the nations. Go ahead. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. So the military came out against Christ to scatter him, destroy him like a whirlwind they came against him. Go ahead. Their rejoicing. Here it comes. Their rejoicing. Was as to devour the poor secretly. Their rejo the rejoicing of the nations was to devour the poor secretly. Some of you right now, you don't understand the terminology for poor. Well, who was the poor? Because I ain't got no money. Every white, white folks right now listening to this, uh, well, I'm, I'm, that's me too. No, it ain't you. 
give me proof of who the poor is in Isaiah 14. I believe it's the last verse. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. What shall one then answer the messages of this nation that the Lord hath founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it? So the poor of his people are Zion. Zion is another word for Israel. That's another name for us. So the poor, go back to Habakkuk now. They're rejoicing. Start from there, Habakkuk 314. That's what it says, they're rejoicing. They're rejoicing was as to destroy the poor secretly. So guess what? Your friendly neighborhood white man, your liberals, your Democrats, your Republicans, they're not going to say, hey, niggas, our agenda is to destroy you, to keep you in sin. They're not going to say that. The Bible says they have secret agendas to destroy us. That's what you, oh, you thought welfare was something good? No, brother, no, sister. She, I get free food. I get food stamps. You simple, that's meant to destroy the family. That's what it's for. It's a form of oppression. Yep. Housing, that's a form of oppression. Yep. Why? Because you're under the white man's, uh, give me some words, help me out. You're, you're under his, his toolage, his, his, his philosophy, his, his care. Right. You're under his care. Exactly. So it's, that's why a lot of people mad at Beanie Man. Beanie Man said, they said, what do you feel, Beanie Man, about the, the right to have gay rights? He says, well, every man got them right to do what they want to do. It's everyone. And everyone's mad at Beanie Man. Beanie Man, let me tell you something. Beanie Man is trying to be PC, politically correct. Why? Because he wants to make that money. Because the music industry, which is another form of oppression, yep. the, the music industry's agenda is to, dis what did it say? To devour the poor secretly. To destroy a secret. You right now, some of you man, you hip hop people. What you talking about? Let me tell you something. Marvin Gaye had a song. I don't even remember the name. Uh, damn. Wake up, all the people. Oh, I don't know oh, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of that song. No more sleeping in a bed. You know that? I know. I know the song. I don't know the name of it. But there were songs like that. Songs of empowerment. Songs of of upliftment. Then you had. Rap groups that came out later on in the 80s, I believe. KRS-One and so one Destruction. Movement. Right. And what was another group? Uh, Public Enemy. Public uh, Enemy. They said, let's get rid of that. That that type of music, we need to destroy them secretly. We want to look for the dumbest blacks and Latinos who will sing and rap about sex, drugs, murder. Mm -hmm. Understand that. So when you got this type of music, give me that in 1 Corinthians as a 15, that type of music kept constantly booming in your brain, in your mind, the rhythm, the groove, and we'd be bopping to it, oh, that's bad. That's, yo, brother, you heard the latest beat from Kanye? Yep. Right, right. And that goes into your subconsciousness yep. to do what? To murder, to rob, to steal, commit adultery. Sex is good. Buddha is good. <laughs> That's why they use, that's why they use Nicki Minaj right. to destroy your woman. I can be a hoe and get paid. Exactly. You got, you got Asha who makes song about, it's okay to be a stripper <laughs> as long as you bring the money at home. That's some exactly. wicked stuff. Right. Those and are stuff that they make to destroy your Negro. Exactly. And Bruce Jenner is a tool, a tool, listen good to what I'm saying, a tool to manipulate black people. He's, they gave him the, what kind of award was the it? The SP. The Arthur Ashe. Why got to be the Arthur Ashe Award? Why him? Why? Because, and then the, when, it, when he got up on a, you know, you know he's six foot five. He's six foot five? Yeah, that's a tall Edomite. He went up on a stage, you know a woman, she puts her hand out like this for you to take her hand. Oh. I'm like, it's, this dude is six foot five. And he gets up there on the stage lo looking feminine, feminizing. And he's, I'm waiting to hear what he said. He says, y'all can make fun of me if you want. So what the hell is this? <laughs> when are they going to ch change the vocal cords? <laughs> it was a scary situation. But my point is that he's a tool to manipulate our people into accepting that lifestyle, to saying it's good. Now, where did I have you go? Um, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Right, regarding the music industry. Yes, sir. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Music is a form of communication. 
Your media is a form of communication. It corrupts goods manner, good manners. In what context? It teaches you that God's commandments are evil. Don't keep God's law. That's why when God says, thou shall not steal, rap music says, you can steal. Get what's yours. Uh, die, die, what does it say? Get rich or well, die trying. trying. It's all mental and spiritual manipulation. Okay, I listen good to what I'm saying. So now, I made a few points. I said that um, there are secret plots against our people. Yes, there are. The homosexual agenda is one that we discuss. Watch this. Oh, 2 Peter. 2 Peter. 2 Peter 3 and verse 3. 2 Peter 3 verse 3. Know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Who are the scoffers? The white man is a scoffer by nature. But it's really, listen good to what I'm saying, it's really talking about you blacks and Latinos who have been manipulated, hoodwinked, and deceived by the media into believing that we are nothing more than niggers and spicks, blacks and Hispanics. We've become scoffers, why? Because of the media. We no longer believe in the one true God. Read that again. Know this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Our people listen to the black man. Rap music, R&B music, What's that song? Put it on the glass. That was, that was the last time I saw it. I'm telling my age now because I couldn't believe when I was hearing. It said, what was that, officer? What did it say? That there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. What are you blacks and Latinos walking after in these last days? Your own lust. If it feels good, do it. Have sex sex and most sex. A, a visual. Um, that's do as thou wilt. Exactly. That's the satanic Bible right there. Do it as thou wilt. We ain't got to keep God's law, so you know, we do what we want. Do it as thou wilt. That's, that's um, uh, Alistair Crowley. There you go. Exactly. 100%. Read on. Verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? That's what your brothers and sisters say to many of us in your life. You say, where is the promise of his coming? Go ahead. For since the fathers fell asleep, since my grandmama died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Grandmama been telling me about that Bible, Jesus coming, Jesus coming. Nigga, where they coming? He ain't here yet. Listen to, if you ever watch these black atheists here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. they're saying this, they're scoffers. Where is this Jesus coming? We've been hearing about this time thing since slavery. Jesus coming, Jesus coming. Listen, Jesus is a black man. With white woolly hair, skin like it burned in the furnace. You ain't heard about that guy yet, but you're hearing about him now. Read. Verse 5. For this they really are ignorant of. You black men, black women, and an Egyptology, black atheist movement, you are ignorant. You and a homosexual following the homosexual agenda, you are ignorant of this. Go ahead. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water. That's right. When you read the history, there was a great consuming flood that destroyed everybody. Listen good. It destroyed everybody except Noah, his three sons, and their wives. Noah, his wife, and his three sons, and their wives. After the flood, and his family got off the ark, right? Give me Genesis 9, 14. I'm going to tie this in with your LGBT community. Lust guarantees a booty tragedy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tying it in with this. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 14. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. What bow is this? The rainbow. That's what it's talking about. The rainbow. Come on. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. The bow shall be in the cloud. What bow? The rainbow. Roy G. Biff. Go ahead. And I will look upon it, that I may remember that the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So now, the rainbow. 
That is God's covenant that he would not kill everybody on the earth with water. That's his covenant. What did the LGBT, LGBT community do with that symbol? Ate the wild. Right. They made it a symbol of same-sex relations. Are you kidding me? You don't think there's going to be a judgment for that? Our people are afraid to even show a rainbow on anything. Oh, gosh, that means I'm a homo if I even put a rainbow on. They've turned the truth of God into a lie. They have turned the righteousness of God upside down. Go back to 2 Peter 3. And that, what verse you left off at? I left off at verse 6. Read 6 again. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And the symbol was the rainbow. The symbol, the covenant that God would not destroy the earth with water was the rainbow, is the rainbow. Watch the next verse. But the heavens and the earth, which now, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Reserved unto fire! Listen good, brothers. Listen good, sisters. Come on. Against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. You brothers and sisters that's living that ungodly lifestyle, repent. Repent. That's the message. Because you know why I'm saying it like that? Because you know what they like to do? I'm going to tell you what the LGBT community likes to do. If you say anything against their lifestyle, you say it's wrong, oh, you hate us. And you got dumb blacks and Latinos saying, oh, they hate us, they hate us, they hate us. Listen, the Bible is against liars, adulterers, idolaters. Give me some more. Thieves. Thieves. Murderers. Murderers. We're against, we're teaching against all that. But the message is not die, 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 because guess what? Some of us came out of those things we've mentioned. The message is repent. This is not a message of hatred. This is a message of love. This is a message of truth. Repent and be saved, you and your families. That's right. What verse we at? We are now at verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years in a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. His promise is, if wickedness shall abound in the earth, I will destroy the countries therein. He's not slack. His promise is that he will deliver one third of the nation of Israel. Come on. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slack. Men. You know what that means? You know you promise a woman something and you don't do it? <laughs> That's slack. Go ahead. But is long suffering to us word. But is long suffering to us word. Who is the us word that Peter is addressing? The Israelites. God is long suffering to us word. You blacks and Latinos, Native American Indians, God is long suffering to you. Go ahead. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's the message. The message is not die, homo, die. The message is repent, brother. Repent, sister. That is the message. Understand that. No matter how deep you are in that lifestyle, you have to come out of it. You must because your life depends on it. Destruction is coming, is coming, is coming. Watch. Read on. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Boom! That's the great noise! Guess what Netanyahu did on the 4th of July? Y'all remember what he did? He flew two oh, fighters. I'm not Netanyahu. Putin. Putin. Putin, thank you. Putin. Putin flew two fighter jets armed with nuclear weapons into America's airspace, mm-hmm. called Obama and said, Happy Independence Day, and flew back. <laughs> that is a message to this country it's about to get on and pop it. You black men, you are asleep in your little la-la lands. You're about to die. And you know, I didn't understand why he did that. <laughs> the Bible's telling you what's about to happen. Repent and be saved, brothers, that's, sisters. That's right. That is the message, no matter how vile your life is. Because all of us was the devil. I know I was the devil incarnate. But guess what? I said, you know what? I believe what that book says. I'm coming out of that life. Right. We all better come out of that life. Come on, where we at? Where we at? But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent 
heat. What type of heat can melt everything here in this country? Thermal nuclear destruction. And we're not reading the Old Testament. We're reading the New Testament. Come on. The earth also and the work that are therein shall be burned up. All of the works here, listen, you rappers. You rappers, you R&B singers, you video vixens. All the works that you do here is going to be burned up. Listen good. So when we mention people like Nicki Minaj, give me some more names. Um, China Black. China Black, China give Black. me some more names. Um, that, that, that Kanye West. That little cockroach. Um, Lil, Lil Wayne. Wayne. Lil Wayne. Well, I'm going to call a brother Young Thug. Young Thug. Young Thug. Uh, uh, ASAP is his name. Another one. None of this, what we're saying, is out of hatred. What many of you are doing, we've all done. We're saying the messages come out of it. Come out of that lifestyle. Many brothers and sisters were about to have lucrative lifestyles in the rap world. When they heard the word, they said, wait, we better come out of that crap because of BS right there. And many of you in this rap game, you know it's white man run. Even, I don't care, what, Jay-Z got his own, uh... Oh, he got his own record label. Guess what, guess what? There are people over him yes, that right. tell him the type of music to put out. Yes, yes, yes. They tell him, listen, that message about, uh... Unity. Unity, that ain't going to sell. That's what they tell him. We want you to do this, put this type of music out. We want every young black man, every young black girl to shake their booty, twerk. We want them to be having sex at an early age. Y'all don't see this? And we're getting AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, from the age of 13 and up. Nobody sees this. And then what they do is they can have abortion. Right. Abortions. Kill those black babies. Or, or tell us, tell us some some good tales of your 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 great adventures selling drugs. Exactly. Rap about that. That's what they want to hear. You don't see the plot against your people. You don't see it. Guess what? What other nation does songs and calls their women bitches and hoes? Excuse my language. You don't see the Chinese doing that. Nope. You don't see white folks doing that. Nope. You don't see Arabs doing that. Nope. Only you destroyed black men, Puerto Rican men. You're the only race that do that because the white man is in your head. That's right. The devil is alive in your brain, and you think it is the way to live. You can make, they will pay an ignorant black man millions of dollars. We will pay you $3.5 million. You, you can barely read, but they're going to give you that money to rap about sex, drugs, and murder. Nobody sees nothing wrong with this. It turns my, so then you get in the game, you in jail. Yep. <laughs> rap about uh, baby mama drama. Half you black men got baby mama drama, half you in jail. You know something is important, Bishop? Remember, remember that latest album, Nicki Minaj? Nicki Minaj uh, disrespect Malcolm X? Oh, yes, 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 yes. None yes, of yes. the so-called black leaders say nothing about that. Exactly. She disrespecting one, uh, one of the great, he, he was a great leader. He, he right. might not believe. Right. But he, Malcolm, X was a, Malcolm X was actually one of the brothers that was standing he, for unified the black man. He That's was right. sincere. He was sincere. Right. She disrespected him. And guess what? That didn't come from her. No, yep. that did not come from her. That, didn't, that came from her owners. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it like that, her owners. Just like your brothers and sisters in the sports world, you have owners. That's right. Yep. That's right. They own you, and they pay you big dollars. And those big dollars is not meant for you. Let me tell you something about your life. Remind me about riches in a second. Let's get back. I'm going to forget the topic. Where we at? Yeah, second Peter's 3 and 11 coming. Go ahead. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? All these things that you see in America, God says through the prophet Peter, the apostle Peter, they shall be dissolved. It's going to be destroyed. Again, again, how, how America has just lifted the embargo on Iran. So-called Israel said, we are going to fight Iran. Russia says, we're going to fight you. That's right. <laughs> Understand the times you're living in. <laughs> Understand that. Watch this. Watch. Did you read verse 12? No, sir. Come on. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I don't understand the time we're living in. Give me Isaiah 54, 16. Don't let me forget about riches. I, got, I, I do want to touch on that. I'm about to show you, brothers and sisters, war is in the Bible. Thermonuclear disaster is in the Bible. 
A lot of you in the con black, the black unconscious community, know oh, that Bible's fairy tale book. You know, uh, show me a book aside from the Bible that talks about thermonuclear destruction from 3,000 years ago. Show me it. Show me a book that shows the conditions of black men and black women as it pertains to slavery on up till today. Show me another book outside of the Bible. You Muslims out there, you got an attitude with us? Call in. You black Muslims, you Farrakhan followers, you're not our enemies. You are our people, and we love you dearly, but you must repent. Understand this. So if you're mad, call in with your proof. Show us in the Quran where it says that black men and black women would go into slavery on slave ships like it does in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Show us in the Quran where it says black women would have single parent households to raise her kids like it says in Isaiah 3, verse 12. Show us! This is a message of love, not of hate. This is a message of unity, of coming together as Israelites. Even Farrakhan, didn't Farrakhan say that we are the children of Israel? Then he sold them to the Scientology. Church of Scientology yes. for $2.3 million. Are you kidding me? Nobody sees nothing wrong with that? Where we at? We're in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. We're discussing thermonuclear destruction. Okay. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Remember back in the day during the Middle Ages, there was somebody called the smith. When he made weapons like swords, he would uh, have this thing, I forgot what it's called. A blower. He would blow the hot coals of fire to make the metal soft. Then he would get a hammer on an anvil to shape and forge that sword or that spear or that armor. But this is going beyond that. This is going into America because the common day smith is the scientist. Well, I'm going to prove it what it says. Read it again. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. That bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Watch this. Let's see if it's talking about a sword or a, a nuclear weapon. Go ahead. And I have created the waster to destroy. I have created the waster to destroy. A sword is not a waster. Mm -hmm. A spear is not a waster. But a missile, an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile, that's a waster. Yep. That can waste everything. Understand what it's saying. Was that it? Yes, sir. Get me Job 20, verse 24, 25. Job. So we went, notice this. We went from the New Testament. Now we're backtracking to the Old Testament to show you Christians are saying the same thing. War is coming. Fire. Thermonuclear fire is coming. Come on. We're in the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon. This so-called white man? It's prophesied that he shall flee from the iron weapon. The iron weapon that Job is talking about is not a spear. Why is going to prove it as we read on? Read again. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. And the bow of steel shall strike him through. Right now you're saying, no, that's a, that's a bow and arrow, brother, my brother. It's not to, a bow and arrow. Look at the attributes of a bow and arrow. You pull the arrow back and you let loose. America has something called missile silos, where it opens up and missiles come forth. Watch. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. It is drawn. This weapon is drawn and it cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword. The glittering sword. Cometh out of his gall. Cometh out of his gall, which is his poison's policies. Go ahead. Terrors are upon him. Terrors are upon him. You mean an arrow is going to terrorize a man on the earth? No, an arrow is not going to do that. That caused terror. Was that it? Go ahead. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. A fire not blown shall consume him. So this arrow shall bring forth fire. And it is a consuming fire, yep. and you can't blow it out. Read that precept again. <laughs> All darkness shall be in its secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. See that? You ain't blowing that fire out. Was that it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. It shall go ill. You that is left on this American policy, it shall go ill with you. Watch this. Give me Zechariah 14, verse 12. Going back to this consuming fire, going back to the waster, 
going back to this fire that shall melt the heavens and the earth, which are now, watch what it says. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. But let's read on. Their flesh, their flesh shall, shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. What type of weapon? Listen good. What type of weapon can do this? Read that again. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Can a sword do that? Can a spear do that? Nope. Consume your flesh while you're still standing. This is describing thermal nuclear fire. Read. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And your eyes shall consume away in the holes of your head. Go ahead. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Mm. That's some heavy stuff there. So, brothers, we ain't got time to play. Look at the news. Look at your uh, Caucasian News Network. They're showing you what's about to go down. Now they're showing you solutions. Repent. Get your lives in order as Israelites. Come out of those whorehouses you call churches. But I know some of you West Indians right now, some of you Puerto Ricans, you Haitians. Oh, I'm going to run to my island. I'll be safe. I'll go to my island. Let's go back to the New Testament. Revelation chapter 6. We're going to read 12 through 17. Let's talk about your island. Will the thermonuclear war, the fallout, affect your island? Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. The sixth seal, watch this. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. When the Bible says the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, it's not talking about literal stars. What's up there that's going to fall when war breaks out? Satellites. That's what America got, an early warning system. All them things, God says, I'm knocking all that crap out the air, out the sky. Go ahead. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely fig. When? When she is shaken of a mighty wind. The she is Babylon the Great. When she, Babylon the Great, the United States, is shaken as a mighty wind. Meaning war, destruction. It's on. Read. And the heaven departed as a scroll. Uh-huh. When it is rolled together. That is the mushroom cloud when a bomb drops. Read. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Every island shall be moved out of its place. So you're not going to be safe in Jamaica. You're not going to be safe in Haiti, Guatemala, Panama. You're not going to be safe in Puerto Rico, in Haiti, Santo Domingo. You're going to die if you don't repent. There is solution to everything. The solution is not with your guns, brothers. When I'm a fight, I'm a fight. You ain't going to do nothing but die. Read on. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Those are those, what are those called? The underground bunkers. Underground bunkers. What are we reading? The Bible. Hey, Mr. Muslim brother, brother, my brother the Muslim, can you read what we're reading in the Quran? Show us uh, underground bunkers in, in the Quran. Show us thermonuclear destruction in the Quran. Show us. It's not dead. It ain't there. Come on. Verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That is the question. Who shall be able to stand on that day? Give me Hosea 1. So what some of you right now, you're saying, so what are we going to do? Are we supposed to leave the country, flee? There's no place you can go where this fire will not touch. Watch. Hosea 1, I want 10 and 11. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Pause. Here in America it is said you are not God's people. How? How? They teach us we are Gentiles. America teaches us we are African Americans, Jamaicans, West Indians, Puerto Ricans, Haitians. Those are Gentile names. They said change their name from Israel. Change their name from Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Don't call them that. 
Call them African Americans, West Indians, read that again, and in the place. And in the place where it was said, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. This is the place where you're hearing it now. You are the sons of the living God. Wake up and repent. Come on. Then shall the children of Judah. Then, now you y'all, everybody heard about the rapture in church growing up. Here go your mama. I'm a Baptist. I'm going to get the rapture. I'm a, I'm a, do we know the religion they got? Pentecost. I'm a Pentecost, so I'm going to go to the rapture. I'm a, give me another one. I'm a Methodist, I'm going to go to the rapture. The word rapture ain't even in the Bible. It means to be caught up, carried away. Mama, let me tell you something. If you go in under Negro, Methodist, Baptist, Episcopal, you are not going to be delivered. Here's the proof, verse 11, one more time. Then, Let's see who's going to be delivered. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. So the Bible is about unity, brothers. Come on. And appoint themselves one head. The one head is Jesus the Christ. It is not Louis Farrakhan. It is not Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson. It is Jesus the Christ. The Black Messiah. That's right. Come on. And not Obama either. It ain't Obama. Thank you. Come on. And they shall come up out of the land. Read it again. And they shall come up out of the land. Read the verse again. Who's coming up? I'm confused. It's going to be Baptist. My mama Baptist. Go ahead. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they. And they. And they. Who's the they? Judah and Israel. Go ahead. Shall come up out of the land. That's why we ain't worried about the thermonuclear destruction. Why? Because the prophecy says Judah and Israel shall gather together and come up out of the land. So, mother, father, if you are under the illusion of you are Republican, Democratic, Negro, Baptist, Episcopalian, Muslim, you are going to die. That's right. And we don't, God don't want you to die. He wants you to be delivered. But you must repent of your sins. No, I made a statement about the rich, right? Yes, sir. Can we get 1 Timothy 6, 17 about? Because you got black brothers and sisters in the rap game, in the R&B game, who are well off, who are rich. The Bible has a message for you. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. Brothers? In the rap game, in the army, in the sports world, don't be high-minded. You brothers and sisters in the acting profession, don't be high-minded. Go ahead. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in uncertain riches. Look at Red Fox. Look at many of the black entertainers who died broke, who had to file chapter, what is it called? Bankruptcy, chapter 13. Don't, look, look at what happened to our brother Wesley Snipes. Look at Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Yep. This is a sad thing. That's why God says don't trust in uncertain riches. Don't be high-minded. Come on. But in the living God. You better put your trust in the living God. Go ahead. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Watch this. That they do good. You are commanded. You that are rich amongst the black and Latin community, you are commanded to do good. And let's, it's not talking about do good to the... They said, oh, I do good. I do the NAACP. What does that um, stand for? Um, Negro National Association. Of I can't hear. National Association. The National Association for the Advancement of Color. Exactly. That is not the good you are to do good to. Let me tell you something. Remember we discussed earlier about secret plots? Okay. The NAACP is a secret plot. Yeah. yeah. It is an organization founded by white people for white people. The, it benefits, they say it benefits uh, for the advancement of colored people. <laughs> That's a lie. It benefits white women, midgets, and homosexuals. And it keeps us under the illusion that we are Negroes. Understand that. So read that again. That's, that's, those, those institutions was a better way. In other words, the white men go and sit down and think and say, Let's do something where we can keep an asthma, where we can put them under control. Monitor. Monitor. And that's institution. Those institutions were set up by the white men where they put their money, their own money they put in it so they can keep the control on it. So they say, okay, we're going to open it, but we're going to put a Negro in charge 
as like it's actually for them, but in reality, it's not for us. Exactly. And you know, a lot of brothers and sisters go to these black universities. A lot of these black universities were built by so-called white people. Yeah, yeah. And you were meant to go in, learn that you are a Negro, and go out into the workforce. Nine out of ten of you black men and women who we do appreciate who have college degrees. Your degrees is not meant for you to go forth and become producers, distributors, owners, but the contrary, workers. A lot of our people got education, but there are no earthly or godly good to their own people. They go, oh, I want to work for IBM. I want to work for Steve Jobs. I want to work for Google. Why don't we work for something to unify ourselves, unify our people? Okay? No, your mind is not. College does not gear you to think like that. How come the East Indian thinks like that? Yep. The Chinese think like that. Yep. And you know, like something you said, um, Deacon Malachi, you made a, a statement. You said the Chinese and East Indians don't give a damn about voting. Oh, that's right. They have their own communities, their yeah. own banks, their own restaurants, their own everything. Yeah. But black people, we are so consumed with keep vote or die, vote or die. We don't have our own thriving communities. We don't have our own banks. We don't have our own school system. We have nothing. That's what voting has done for us. That's right. Where we at? We're in First Timothy chapter six, verse eighteen. Now, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute. Ready to what? Ready to distribute. Ready to what? Ready to distribute. Now, who was Peter saying there to be ready to distribute to? Are you to be ready to distribute to Baptists that keep us in that lying religion? Are you to distribute to? The Nig give me some Negro. Oh, the NAACP, the National a Action Network. Right. Those things are, 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 are satellites for the white man. You are meant to distribute to Israel, the Israelites, because we're giving you the truth. Like it says in, give me that in Acts 2. You know what I want? This is the proof of who you are meant to distribute to. Because right now you're going, oh, you, oh you, you, you just want us to give y'all them. No, 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 no. That is your godly duty. And guess what gets done when you do that? It ain't meant for us to live as a uh, fat pockets. What is it yep. called? Luxury. Fat cat. Fat, a fat cat. You got it for me. You know what I want? Yes, sir. We're in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse I'll start at 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done in it by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued, continued. Can you see that? And they parted them to every man as every man had need. They give me the chapter four. And you know, it's a key word I want in chapter 4. It's saying the same thing, but there's one word I want. Which is the same word we read in 1 Timothy 6, 18. You got it? We're in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked, or as many as were possessors of lands or, or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Our forefathers had a community thriving under Rome, under the Roman Empire, trying not to depend upon Rome. Do these ministers, does your black church minister distribute to the poor of our people? No, no. Hell no. They live in, they want a $65 million jet. Are you kidding me? $65 million can keep our build up. We can have our own houses, our own, school. our own schools, our, our own school. banks, our own hospitals. Yeah. You black people have been hoodwinked by these fake black leaders. That's right. Understand that. Understand what we're saying here. You know the crazy thing is about that? Speaking of $65 million, did you know, I don't know if some of you know, do you know where Kwefo Dalaga got his church? In that same neighborhood, there's nothing but 
drug dealers, you got prostitution running around. And guess what? All of our people. You're not going to hear them say, I want to collect $65 million to clean that neighborhood up. Right. Help our people know, I want a private jet. And your Negro so simple, he's going to get it. He got it already. I read that he got it. Damn. He said, praise white Jesus. Keep Damn. hope alive. So... Oh. What we're reading, we're giving you Bible truth, brothers and sisters. So today is your day to decide whether or not you want to repent as Israel or stay in that dumb, fake religion you in and die. That's it. Okay, That's understand it. that. What do you say, Lama? Go ahead. Yeah, that's it. Because at the end of the day, either you're going to take heed to what the Lord's given you or you're going to go in your own understanding. Your own understanding is going to brought you to the gate of hell, dead. You're going to die. And your wickedness. That's what's going to happen to you if you don't take heed to the message that we're giving you. Exactly. So you know what the gay agenda, right? It's all in schools now, right? Black people up in the uproar. Well, what you going to do? What are you going to do, brothers and sisters? You mad about the gay agenda in your school system? Oh, they said they might take away the 501c3 from the, the religious groups. What if they, hey, we just got one. Take it. Take it, devil. We don't give a damn. You ain't going to stop this truth. Understand that. So, y'all see what's happening in the world, brothers, sisters. Understand. Y'all see what's going on. He's on? We have to. Give me that Zephaniah 2 one. Y'all know what I want. Conscious decision to come together. Why? Because that's prophecy. Come on. We're in the book of Zephaniah. Book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh huh. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Brother, sister, understand that. According to what you're seeing, even if you didn't believe in the Bible, are you desired? Does this country desire you? You know there's a new, uh, uh, the Voters Registration Act is back in Congress again to discuss whether or not to, get, to give black people another 10 years to vote. <laughs> Y'all don't see nothing wrong with that. Nobody sees nothing wrong with that. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know there is none for the Chinese? Exactly. There is none for the Arabs? There is none for the so-called white man? But let's find, and, and let me tell you, it's, uh, the white man is so wicked, and our people is sleeping. Not only that they bring that, right? But now you got these states who try to pass laws. They come with something called voter, vote, vote, what is that, voter ID? Yes. Where the Negro have to show ID to vote. Right. You know why they want to bring that? Because the only majority of these Negroes have no ID. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's right. Okay. You know what? We got to come to the point where we say to hell with voting. That's right. Exactly. We have to come together. Brothers, sisters, we have the power under the Most High. Give me that Zechariah 4 6, whole Zephaniah. You know what I want. We have the power to come together and create our own schools, teach proper and true history create our own economic system read that for me we're in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts that's the key we can come together according to the spirit of God you got brought the Black Panther, New Black Panther Party. They met the Ku Klux Klan, yes. and they had a, a, a fist fight. Fist fight. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, listen good. <laughs> There's going to be racial uprisings. I'm not saying the whole country is going to go into a racial uh, war, but I am saying in certain parts of this country, there will be racial uprisings. Now, once you take that step, like I just saw a video where Jake Bloods and Crips beat up this white boy. He was a Klan's member, right? Yes. Beat the hell out of him. There's going to be repercussions. Hosea 5.15, where it says, where the Lord says, uh, in their affliction. Can you read that for me? I'm going to show you what's about to happen. In the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. God knows, you black men and black women, you won't seek the one true God un unless you are afflicted. You are about to be afflicted as a people. You have attacked the Klan. <laughs> okay, hip hip hooray. 
Now they're going to retaliate. Now, I'm not saying that out of fear. Oh, hell no. I, we know what's about to go on. What's up? It's going to be on and popping. And you brothers in a new Black Panther Party, I'll just say this to you. Don't run out of bullets. Because you have to go to the same man you hate and despise. You have to go to him now to get the same bullets you want to use to shoot at him. That's right. Understand this. We must return to the living God as Israelites. You saw the movie Cotton, I think it's Cotton, what's that with Eddie Murphy and, uh, oh, um, and Hall Arsenio Hall? Hall. No. Hall, 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 Hall of Nights. Hall of Nights. Hall of Nights. Remember they were shooting one gang against the other and Arsenio Hall had this little, was it a 30 or 22? <laughs> and they said, what the hell is that? Put that that's what it's going to be like. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you are not trained for a gunfight. The white man is well trained. He has his sons and daughters going to the range daily. And understand, I'm not saying this out of fear. I'm, not, I'm saying this out of warning. That's it. Israel, return and come back to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the one true God. And we shall be delivered. Again, I'm not saying out of fear because if somebody comes for us, we're going to give them the thumps. We're going to handle our, our business. You white folks, you, we're not going to let you come and destroy us. But understand this, we are not a violent people. We're going to teach the word of God. We're going to teach it to our people, organize our people. That's our sole mission. Everybody understand that, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I hope you understand that thing. Go ahead, what do you want to say? Come on. Oh. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah, now, it, it just, we it, out of time. It, it just, a lot of time, you know, like, uh, when we, when the message is going out to our people, the the message will go out where they have a form of understanding. Right. But uh, but the spirit of fear will torment our people. You know yes. why? Because you don't believe in the true God. Right. Because if you believe in the true God, God message said we have to put our trust upon Him. That's how we're gonna deliver. Let by me putting, ask you, does that mean? Let the white man smack the hell. He walk up to and smack no, the hell out of you. No, we have to. We have to defend ourselves, like our forefathers with the Maccabees when they come against us in the Sabbath. They defend them, uh, themselves. You understand? But us, God do not give us a spirit of fear. You know why? Because we believe in Him. Exactly. We believe in Him. Exactly. Let me explain that. Turn the other cheek. The turn the other cheek law that Christ gave in Matthew five was for brother and brother. This brother do something to me, I turn the other cheek means I'm not going to retaliate and do something to him. Why? Because he's my brother. That's right. That's what Christ was saying. But you know what the Christian church does? Like them, them, those dead spirits in Charleston, uh -huh. their women, six black women got murdered. They said, we ain't going to do nothing crazy. You know what? I would have had to hunt that devil down. That's we would have got him before the cops. You're not going to walk in our homes and houses and kill us and walk away. Sisters, we understand that you dead, you people in the Christian church, you have an evil dead spirit, a fearful dead spirit. When you read about Christ, let me show you something. Remember, give me the scripture. I'm going to show you the power of Christ. Remember when it came to get Christ and yep. John? Yep. Give me that. Somebody. I got to prove the point. Because somebody right now, there's a dead zombie Christian saying, no, Jesus never fought nobody. You are a liar. And you don't know the scriptures. When the scribes and Pharisees sent a small army against Christ, where is it, John 22? I can't, come with somebody help me here. John, there is no John 22. John 20, let me see. No, John 19, John 19. No, it ain't that, no, 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 no. John 18. John 18, read verse three for me. We're going to read three down. This is the proof, you dead Christians. Christ wasn't no punk. Right. He didn't sit around and let his men get killed. Watch, this is the proof. John chapter 18, verse 3. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and, and weapons. And what? And weapons. Read on. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth. And said unto them, 
whom see ye? When it says he went forth, when he stood out in front of the disciples, he stepped forward in front of his men, and what happened? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Here comes, here comes. As soon then, as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. What is that? Christ used spiritual power to knock that small band of officers down to show them, I can kill you right now if I want to. But the message, the mission, mission was for Christ to sacrifice himself. Read on, watch what he says. Then ask he them again, whom seek ye? I asked you again, who are you looking for? Go ahead. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Watch this. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Let these go their way. If you're looking for me, brothers, let these, let my disciples go. Christ knew their mission, their plan was to kill everybody. Christ said, no, that ain't, going, that ain't God's plan. You're going to let my disciples go, or I will kill you now. That's right. So they let the disciples. I'm showing you the character of Jesus, That's the right. black Messiah. He wasn't no faggot. He wasn't no punk. So pull your head out of that lying Christian religion. That's right. That's right. I want you to remember when he stood before Pilate. Yeah. He said, Christ said, if this kingdom was mine, my disciples would fight. Another part he said, don't you know, I have the power to call 12 legions of angels right now to kill you? Christ was not no fairy tale, long hair punk with blue eyes and red skin. Understand that? He was a brother. He was God on earth in the flesh. He was the savior of the nation of Israel. He is our king. He is our Messiah. He is our Lord and Savior. We are following him. So you brothers and sisters, come out of those false religions. Come out of the Baptist church, the Episcopalian church. Come out of Islam and come repent as Israel. Understand that. We must gather ourselves together. Yeah, well, come on. You know, when you examine this thing, all these churches, man, they are, uh, they are like a grave site. When you examine this thing, how long have they been in our neighborhood? What's, what's good church has done to us? None. These pastors get rich off of us. They are part of our oppression. That's right. I'm glad you said that. The church, the black church, is an oppressive system. Oh, I know right now what you're thinking, but the black church is the backbone of the black community. No, it's not. Give me that in Isaiah 28. I think it's 14 and 15. About they made the start at 14, about you scornful men that rule this people. Your black leaders, they are con men. Yep. Your black leaders have made an agreement with white America to keep you impoverished, yes, to right. keep you in a low state, right, to right. keep you disillusioned. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So it's talking about you black leaders. Watch this. Here it come. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. Because you black leaders have said, we have made a covenant with death, an agreement with this system. Go ahead. And with hell. And with hell. This low state that our people live in? Are we at agreement? Are we at agreement? Why? Because they're getting paid big dollars. Look at Al Sharpton. Yeah. He's getting paid top dollar now. Uh, Isn't he on MS? MS, MS, MS more MS, stupid MS. news like Yep. That's what he's on. Look, I want you to look at great black leaders you had. Angela Davis, right, from the Black Panther Party. Where is she? She is a professor, a school, a, a university professor. Uh, uh, give me the, what's the guy? Pablo Guzman was one of the leaders of the Young Lords. He, what is he, a reporter? Uh, Geraldo Rivera was another leader of the Young Lords. It was the, yeah, the Young Lords, right? Yeah. Yeah, this there were many great black and Latin leaders that the white man said, just give that nigga some money and he will shut up. Read the verse again. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, when judgment shall come upon America, it shall not come unto us. You think it won't come unto you, you black leaders. Why? For we have made lies our refuge. You black leaders have made lies your covering of safety. Go ahead. 
and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. You hid yourselves under falsehood. The falsehood of your Christian religions, your denominations, your political groups. That's the falsehood you hide yourself under. Get, you know what? Imagine this. Every church minister, if they pool their money together, if they just put 10% of what they gathered on one Sunday, any given Sunday, and do that on a regular basis, they could create and fortify black communities where we could have our own hospitals. Because we have the education to do it. We could have our own banking system because we have the education to do it. Our own school system because we have the education to do it. That's what the money could do. But no, you black people, no, you leaders, you say, no, I don't want to do that. That's not our goal. Because our friendly neighborhood white man said, I'm going to give you millions of dollars. Keep these Negroes divided, disorganized, and disillusioned. And docile. Yeah. Bishop, yes, sir. Bishop, perfect example. That's 65 million airplane. That, that, right. That's 65 million dollars he just finished by the airplane. Is your mic on? Yes. Okay, on. Yeah, for example, you know what we can do with the 65 million dollars mm. in our neighborhood? Yes. We can change the world in our neighborhood. We can change the heart of these young men. Right. Stop selling drugs. You ought to stop killing each other. Stop but that's not, money. yeah, I mean, but that's not what the $65 million was for. The $65 million for one man to show his shyness on, uh, upon this earth while his people is still in a poverty state. That's wickedness right that's there. Wicked. Exactly. Exactly. Tavis Smiley, remember he did a, 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 a show on C-SPAN called a Covenant, Black America's uh, uh, Covenant yep. with, Black, America. with America, something like that. I want to show you that the things that have been, what happened in the past is happening now. Get that in John 11, 47, I think it is. John chapter 11, verse 47. I want to show you how the black leaders of the time, during the time of John, had a covenant with white Rome, with Rome. And it's the same covenant black leaders have with America today. Is that the verse I want? Yes, sir. Okay. Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees a council and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. That black man called Jesus Christ does many miracles. If we let him alone. If we leave him alone, him and his disciples. All men will believe on him. All Israelites will believe on him. And the Romans. This is my point. This is the point. And what? And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And the Romans, the white man shall come and take away both our place place meaning our position our position and nation i want you to understand that i want y'all to understand that i look silly turn this off take away both our place and yeah, I heard the nation. you can't hear me out of this one so the covenant that we read in isaiah 28 uh, fortifies and proves that the Bible is a true book. The black leaders during the time of Christ had a covenant with Rome to keep the Israelites from following Christ, the black Messiah, to keep them from organizing. So likewise today, the same black leaders have made a covenant with white America and said, we have made an agreement with you with death and hell. Under falsehood have we hid ourselves so that these black men will not unify as Israelites. They will not come together and build nothing. That's what they do. Okay. What y'all got? Come on, somebody. Uh, I, I can't follow that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, when you look in the white America, white America was not set up for us. White America was set up for white America. That's right. Our people, that white America set up to be over our people. Those are brainwashed brothers. They come in the they come in the community. They ain't come to heal nobody. They come to heal their pockets. What Lava, Lava, Deacon Lava, you know you know another thing. Everything the bishop going. Uh, you know one of the things that I notice about our people. Our people look at themselves as individuals. The other nations look at themselves as a, as a whole. Just like Deacon Yao Sapo always say, you cannot rise above your people. Right. You can't, because when you look at our people, the first argument is, oh, what about Jay-Z? What about Beyonce? Listen, they can't, I don't care how much money Jay-Z get, I don't care how much money Beyonce get, I don't care how much money Oprah get. 
you can never rise up above your nation. You can't. It's impossible. Hey, Oprah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oprah Winfrey thought that. Remember, she went to France to do yeah. pig shopping. Yeah. The white man of France said, No, you're not coming in our store. No. She said, I'm Oprah. And let me tell you what the white people see. We, when a white man looks at one black man or black woman, let me tell you what he sees, in case you're, not, you're confused. He sees 45 million niggas in your face alone. No matter how rich you are, he sees 45 million impoverished, disillusioned. Yep disenfranchised people when he sees you, yep. no matter how rich you are. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 hold on. You remember uh, uh, Magic Jensen's, how that white boy put him to shame? He said he got oh, yeah, all yeah, this yeah, money, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he never went to uh, help his own people. Yeah, your right. black people, your black brothers, men who have money, that turn, you turn your backs off on your own people. Your judgment will come if you don't repent. I'm telling you. Right, and, and but you're in the strip club spending twenty thousand dollars any given night in a drunken stupor. Well, didn't, I'm not sure. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Mayweather, wasn't he in a strip club with wads yep. of not yep. singles, yep. hundred dollar bills? Yep. Just all of them. This, this is this is pathetic. This is why the white man looks at us and says niggers. That's why a white man said, sure, we can give black people 40 acres and a mule. We can give them its value in money. He said, but guess what will happen? He said, do you think their condition will change? He said, oh, he said, Cadillacs will go up in, oh, in escalate. Es escalate. Because <laughs> Dave Chappelle did a joke on it. Weed will circulate. He said, their minds are not to the point where they can properly organize. And that's, that's what Christ said. What did Christ say? He said, you must be born again. Being born again means your mind must change. You can be a multimillionaire, but you can still be a nigger at the same time. But, uh, Bishop, even though if they do give them the money, I guarantee you, no matter how they said every year how white people uh, is a few billionaire ways up, that year, there are going to be a lot of white people be billionaires. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because they're going to spend their money back, giving back to the white folks. You know what? You know what's, you know what's heavy about that vision of being here, folks? Is that a lot of our brothers and sisters that have come into this world, it's called new money. Yes. They have, they, it's, like, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. Right. They're still mentally destroyed, but in a higher tax bracket. So even though they're in a higher tax bracket, they still do niggerish things. Here's the thing, when we get money, we never stay in our communities that we came up in. Right. We move to the so-called white man's suburbs. Exactly. So why, why, why don't we establish our own neighborhoods where when people, our people get money, they move to our neighborhoods, as they did in the early 1900s, yeah, right. okay? In our Black Bottom, down out in Detroit, we had our own hotels, we had our own uh, restaurants, where our people, when they traveled through the Chitlin Circuit, mm -hmm. they stayed at our hotels because we were not allowed to stay in the white man's hotel. Mm -hmm. We created our own, so our people had our businesses and our neighborhoods to flock to. But the new Negro with that new money, now, he'll blow a million dollars in a strip club, yep. Yep. go back to his $80 million house, mm -hmm. and all of his people have nothing. No, sir. And what is new money compared to old money? White folks got old money. Old money. And when I, and when you hear the term old money, that's slave money. That's that's what it means. Yes. That's exactly what it means. That's right. That's right. You got that scripture? Yes. We're in the book of Sirach, chapter 14, verse 3. Riches are not comely for a nigger. Damn! Damn. Oh. That's it right there. That's that's a banger right there. Let me read it again. Riches. Is, that, is that the Bible? This is, an, this is the Bible. That's this is what right. God says. That's right. Let me see what God says one more time. Riches are not comely for a nigger. And what should an envious man do with money? What should an envious man do with money? Yes, sir. Can we see who he's envious of? Give me Proverbs 3.31. Who is Floyd Mayweather? Woo. Now listen good when I say this. Uh, I'm not saying it's out of hatred because we love Floyd Mayweather. We love all our people. But our people who have money are envious of who? Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. Now go back to Sirach. Go back. Read the bottom of that again. 
And what should an envious man do with money? What shall an envious man do with money? Envious of who? One more time, Proverbs. Envy thou not the oppressor. Who is the oppressor? Your friendly neighborhood white man is our oppressor. Don't envy your oppressor. And choose none of his ways. Choose none of his ways. That's called, The Bible answers everything. So we envy him. We want to look like him. We want to talk. Oh, oh, wait. Did I say something wrong? We don't want to look like the so-called white man. What's his name? Uh, um, Sammy Sosa. Look at Sammy Sosa. Did he bleach his skin? Oh, yes, yes, he did. Yes, what is the Jamaican Chanta? Uh, vibes Cartel. Uh, vibes Cartel. Look at him. What about Nicki Minaj? She got the blonde, Mary J. Blige, the blonde hair, the contact. Look at our people. Mary's been out since the early 90s. I've never seen her with nothing but blonde hair. Exactly. Sisters, what do you think a perm is? You envy your oppressor. I'm doing that on a superficial context. But when you get deeper into it, we envy the oppressor. We want to floss like he floss. Wow. We want the jets. We want the yachts. Wow. We don't want to help our people. But let me tell you, the white man does behind the scenes help his people. That's yeah. what we saw with Dylan Roof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, behind the scenes, the white man says support him. What was the other Edomite, the white guy that they supported? Um, George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. And there was one? Darren Wilson. Darren, Darren Wilson. Wilson, thank you. He's a millionaire. Exactly. You, they support their people. You know, uh, Bishop. You know that uh, when you're looking at the condition of our people, what they stand for, when the white man looking at us, it, what he see is what he destroy already. Mm -hmm. So our people who have money, they're thinking that because I have money, I don't look like I am destroyed. Man, but the money you have, look what you do with it. The Chinese billion dollars in thick hair. Mm -hmm. the, the East Indians come in your neighborhood get filthy rich. But the money you have, you use it to show hatred of your own selves. That's right. That's right. That's right. Make no sense. How the hell I have money, but I use my money to show that I hate myself. That's right. And, and Deacon, you know what they do? The other nations know we're so destroyed and we have that self-hate in us that they're going to sell you the products that will medicate you in your self-hate. Right. Yeah. They're yeah. going to sell you the weeds because I don't know, well, New York, I know too. But let's take the our women, for example. When you look at the hair salons, there's no pictures on the outside of, of poses of white women. There's no pictures of the East Indian women. No. There's no pictures of the Arab or the Chinese women. No. You go in them stores, you see all the mannequins of dark skin yeah. with big blonde heads, yeah. different kinds of weaves. Yeah. They're geared towards your self-hate. They're making money off you through your self-hate. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's bugged out about that? When we want to open a business, they say you have to have a credit history, right? Yep. America has policies in place for people of other nations where they don't need a credit score. The Chinese can come over here. There are policies in place where they are given millions of dollars, or I'll say, let's say thousands, to open up a Chinese restaurant, to open up uh, hair centers, nail salons. And the banks will say, how are you going to get this, get this money, the loans, if we get, when we give it to you? How are you going to get it back? We're going to open up in black communities. And they say, go forth and prosper. Give me that. Right. Get that Deuteronomy 28, 33. Hold your points, Shem, because I know you got something heavy for us. If you got something, bring it forth, bro. Deuteronomy 20, I think it's verse 43, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. What are we about to read? How the other nations come among us and suck us dry economically. Watch this. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger is the other nations. The prophecy says they shall rise above the Israelites. And let, read what it says. Go on. And thou shall come down very low. Come on. He shall lend to thee. The nations, the strangers shall lend to us. And thou shalt not lend to him. We would not lend to him. Why? Because we have no economic foundation. The other nations have all the money. They organize together. Chinese man go to a black community, open a Chinese store. Does he use any portion of that money to help black people? That would be a hell no. No, he goes back with that money and goes to Chinatown or sends it to China. Yeah. We don't do that. We don't understand how it works. And, and this show, I'm glad you brought that out about all these different nationalities. They have their own communities. Yeah. And they, but you will see the Chinese um, this is in our community. You will see the Korean nail salons in our community. You will see the Jewish man, the fake Jews bank in our community. 
where is our businesses in their communities? That's not it exist. don't exist. It don't exist. It's a, you're, 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 you're dreaming. You're, you're in dreamland right now. If you, if you believe that we're, we are equal in this land. Because the black community has no business of their own. We can't support each other. I go into the dry cleaners bomb around my way, and I see the, the woman I'm doing business with, she don't even know English. But she is she has a business in the black community. And who's behind her? Her little she, she's watching her little baby. I'm telling my daughter, hey, see that's gonna be your oppressor when you grow up, huh? If you don't do something. Because that one is gonna grow up and oppress you next and yep. the next generation, man, if this if this cycle continues. So we gotta come out of this foolishness, man. It's, it's one thing you're gonna find out uh, our organization, IUIC on the price. Uh, we not only talk the talk, we will walk the walk. Right. We will make sure our kids well educated with the way we will teach them, not the way white America will teach our people. You understand? We not only talk the talk, we will show you that we can make it happen. Right. That we will make so-called black leaders look like a bunch of liars, right. a bunch of stealing, a bunch of wicked Negroes. But you know, uh, I'm glad you said that, Laba. I was gonna say, what you're looking at right now is a new day. We are the new breed. That's why you're looking at the new breed. Because we, we're not negotiating, we're not marching, we're not gonna vote. What you're gonna see is we're gonna work up this so-called Negro and this so-called Spanish in America and all over the world. That's right. The truth will be told. And you're looking at the man who's gonna bring it forth. We not we don't care about your money, Esau. We don't care about your power. What we care about is working up our people. That's right. That's what we are about. That's what we IUIC is about. Is working up the so-called Negro and the so-called Hispanic, the so-called American Indian in America and all over the earth. You're looking at the new leader of the earth. That's what you're looking at. Under Christ. You know, when you examine when you examine everything else, we will turn back. We're gonna turn back. And we're gonna reach out for the brothers that destroy, for the sisters that have no such thing. We're gonna come back. We're gonna come back for you, sister. Because we come here with you, we're gonna leave you with you. With the white frame of mind, with the white spirit. You're not gonna come with us with the blonde hair. No sister. Brother, you're not going to come with the nigger spirit. No, brother. You're going to come with the spirit of Christ. We're going to have to teach you the Christ spirit, how to roll in this system. We're going to come back for you, brother. Believe that. Exactly. Farrakhan made a statement. He, he, like when you look. Okay, Farrakhan said, speak truth to power. But then he opens his mouth about Islam and nothing is done. The Million Man March, which is another one coming and nothing gets accomplished. I would like to be part, all of us, on the next Million Man March to address a million black men. Mm. Wouldn't that be great? Okay. Somebody reach out. You listen, if you if you got the connections, you get us on that panel. You get us up there. Get the Israelites up there. Give me John 8, 32. Let's speak truth to power. We're tired of playing games. Okay? And when we bring forth the truth, we can organize a million black men. But we must be of one mind and one accord. Read that for me. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So Farrakhan says, speak truth to power. But we're still in a poor, impoverished condition. Because Farrakhan is not the man of God. I'm going to tell you straight. Now, I do love Farrakhan. Don't get me wrong. But he is not coming with the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth. No matter how fiery and... Offensive. offensive and eloquent. eloquent and orator he is. He's one of the best orators there are out there. Yep. And I love that about him, but he's not coming with the full, unadulterated truth. But we are. We're going to speak the truth. And when this truth comes out full force, our people is going to be set free. Right. And guess what, brothers and sisters? We will be going home. Because you know, right. going home means the missiles are coming. Yes. Right. There's going to be destruction here. That's right. Bishop, 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 you know the message is, is clear. If you're not a real leader, move out of our way. We go. will gather the people. That's, right. that's, that's our job. We will gather our people under God's laws. 
if you're not a will leader, the message is step up our way. Giving us the floor, then we will build, like, like the bishop just said. We will address the one million men march. We will tell our people what they need to hurt. You understand? Stop lying to our people. Tell the truth. Okay. And with that, brothers and sisters, once again, we want to thank the bishop for coming out. We want to thank Deacon Lobby for coming out. We pray for their safe return to their homes. We say shalom. 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 I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.